Next up in biology is a topic that's entitled recycling. Now, even though it's called recycling, it's not like the recycling you do with your waste. So it's not about, you know, splitting your trash up into uh, glass and plastics and cardboard. It's about how nature recycles things. So there are two cycles that we need to know about. So we need to know about the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. Now, carbon is one of the fundamental elements that makes up all living organisms. You could kind of describe humans as being uh, carbon-based life forms. All life on this planet is carbon-based. But there is only a limited amount of carbon available. So in order for all life on Earth to exist and to, for new life to be able to exist, the carbon that we have has got to be recycled. So we have a little picture to show us how the carbon uh, moves around. So we tend to think of the carbon as when it's sort of in its natural state, just floating around, it's as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The carbon can leave the atmosphere by going into plants and green things basically that do photosynthesis. So the carbon dioxide leaves the atmosphere via photosynthesis. The plants can then get eaten by primary consumers and then they consume the carbon and it gets passed that way. Um, the consumers of the plants can then get eaten by higher level consumers and get passed along that way. Now, all living things will also, also be respiring. So when we breathe in and out, we breathe in the um, oxygen and we convert it into um, energy and a byproduct of that is carbon dioxide. So when we breathe back out, the carbon dioxide leaves us. So for all the steps, all the organisms that are taking carbon from other organisms, they give it back to the atmosphere every time they breathe out. So respiration is a way that carbon dioxide goes back into the atmosphere. Um, another way that it can go back into the atmosphere is that um, wood and fossil fuels can be burnt. When we burn them, we turn them back into carbon dioxide again and that goes into the atmosphere as well. Now there's one extra loop here and it's the one that sort of goes, oops Daisy, it goes through the ground here, so along the bottom. Now this section is about um, when living things die. So when the living things die, they then get decomposed and um, the decomposers will slowly turn them back into um, basically their base elements, they'll eat them and things and it just carries it on through. So we call the dead matter detritus and it just goes into the soil and then microbes in the soil will consume it and turn it back into CO2. So the key points that you need. Um, Plants photosynthesize, remove, uh, which removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The other way that carbon can leave the air is that it can get dissolved into oceans, um, and it's then used by sea animals to make their shells, which eventually become limestone rock. Uh, just in case you've forgotten the bit in red, it's just for those doing the higher paper. So how does the carbon go back to the air? Well, it goes back via respiration of plants or animals, decomposition by bacteria and fungi, and burning of fossil fuels. And for those of you doing the higher paper, the limestone releases its carbon dioxide during um, volcanic eruptions and when it's been weathered. So just getting worn away by time and tide, really. Those are the key points you need to know. Now, the diagram that I showed you, if I turn it back to it, this one here, it's not always going to be the same picture that they'll show you. They might choose to only show you a small part of it and ask you to put some labels on. Or they might show you it with labels on and then ask you just to talk about what's happening and what it shows, why it's important. But the picture doesn't really matter. It's just the idea that it goes around in this sort of loop and they want you to be able to think about what's happening at each stage. So nitrogen cycle. Um, nitrogen is really important because it's what's inside our proteins. And as we know, our proteins are used for growth and repair in the human body. Very, very important. So how does the nitrogen travel around? Well, there are loads and loads of steps with the nitrogen one, um, pretty much like with the carbon one. So we can think about the nitrogen just being in the air. It gets taken in by plants or by um, bacteria in the soil and then gets passed on by the things that consume it. They turn it into animal protein. They then get eaten by other things and so on and so forth. When things die, 
or when they uh, excrete, so um, any urine or feces that they make, those get decomposed and turn into ammonia, which then get turned into nitrates, then nitrites, and then they get used by plants and can go back to nitrogen in the air again. So it's a big cycle, but we'll give you the, um, the highlights that you need to know. So how does it leave the air? Well, for the lower, we just need to know that plants absorb nitrogen and use it to make proteins. For the higher, we need to know that nitrogen-fixing bacteria take nitrogen gas from the air and deposit it into the soil. You also need to know that lightning strikes can deposit nitrogen compounds into the soil. And how does it leave? Well, for the foundation, we just need to say that when animals die, they decompose and the nitrogen goes back into the soil. For the higher, the decomposers are turning the proteins from the dead animals into ammonia. Nitrifying bacteria convert the ammonia into nitrates and denitrifying bacteria convert the nitrates into nitrogen gas, which then just goes into the air. Again, you could be given a cycle that will look however they fancy drawing it really and maybe put some of the steps on or be able to identify that nitrifying bacteria do this or that decomposers do this bit. It's mostly just a matter of knowing the key steps really. So we do need to know a little bit more about decomposers. So decomposers need oxygen and the right pH to work. So obviously the conditions in which they're in are going to affect the rate at which they can decompose things. Now waterlogged soil has less oxygen, so decomposition is slower. And in acidic soil, the decomposers don't work as well, so again, decomposition is slower. It's just a couple of facts you need to try and remember. So if they ask you um, what might be different in waterlogged soil, well, you'd say decomposition would happen slower. Those are the kind of things they're looking for there, really. Okay, I know this one probably sounds a bit scary, but it's not really that bad if you just boil it down to the bullet points. Okay, so remember, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And I will see you next week.